as some of our students are unaware of the words to our school song, the purple and gold. Teachers are advised to go over the words with their students, for singing our school's alma mater with the proper attitude will foster in a more appropriate school spirit and public spirit. The words, first stanza, are as follows. <laughs> He holds sons and daughters. His heart will never grow old. Why? The earth is purple and the gold. Monday, who do you think we are? Orders? Signed Mark Anthony. It is my considered opinion that you are very well qualified. No matter how boring the lesson, you always tend to make it more interesting. I suggest you continue the good work. Signed Harry A. Hagan. <laughs> Clean up the slums before you go to Mars and stop the bomb before it's too late. As far as school goes, there wouldn't be school without us. <laughs> and no future. Blue Martin. Please tell Lou Martin to quit showing off. He thinks he's so hot. Well, I know. Signed, Theory Student. Have no fear, Miss Barrett. We're behind you 65%. <laughs> Thank you for showing me that there's nothing more important than communication. But with so many other students, I feel you and I are both wasted. Elizabeth Ellis. I'm not a good candidate, but I would just like someone to know. I'm putting this in the suggestion box for the record. Today is my birthday. Happy birthday, time. Me. <laughs>
Doesn't it get you a little excited that a student actually cares to read? You sound like Sylvia. I used to get excited, but with no help, no books, and with constant demand. Now all I care about is for some shred of library to survive. And right now, what you need is 49 cents? Right now, I'm caught in trying to maintain the rules I didn't make, but it's paying the 49 cents to make you feel better. I wish it were that easy. I remember your comments in teacher's lounge getting involved with the no good. So pig pot, think only of yourself. Amuse the captain, you said. That's the only way to remain intact. I'm not sure it's possible to teach and also remain intact. Make up your mind. As Ella Friedenberg would say, I have a problem. But you're working on it. Right now, all I care about is maintaining my amusement. Come on, Miss Paul. Uh, Sylvia, I've written another parody for you. Gray's Elegy. The school bell tolls the now starting day. Ah, but do not ask for whom it tolls, I see. The students stairward push their screaming way. I know, alas, it tolls for thee and me. That's very clever. I have some others here, also very clever. When you didn't show up yesterday, I was worried you'd left us. Glad you're back. I... I think he's more concerned than he shows. Perhaps. They won't even let me talk to Alice. She's not having visits. That's what I hear. Miss Bella! <laughs> Why have you neglected to send in your attendance sheet for today? Because Linda Rosen wore a pink sweater and fuchsia stretch pants at school. And she was seen by Mrs. Kincaid who had a cooler deal in her office. She was also seen by the boys in my homeroom who migrated in mass to her city. I'll take the attendance minute. Unless they follow her into the sea like letters and all drowned. All for Mrs. Kincaid! <laughs> she only had one comment in Alice's accent. Hand in the four free locker number and book receipts for Blake Alice. <laughs> we pay Kelsey to keep our students in their seats and be aware of our responsibility in democracy. What else can they say? I don't know. Some indication they care about the girls? Are we supposed to be uninvolved? Nothing any of us could have done for Alice Blake. She was having a very rough time outside. How do you know? One time, she came to be beaten black and blue. Beaten? What did you do? I gave her a cup of tea. Why tea? What else could I do? I know more than anyone here about what goes on outside. Poverty, disease, malnutrition. And yet, I'm not even supposed to give out even a band-aid. But that isn't it? I used to plead, bang on my desk, talk myself a horse, argue, arguing with kids, parents, welfare administration, social agencies.
He should not have been let out of the room unescorted. He knew it, and you knew it. The fact that he didn't cheat should be noted. To what purpose? No one likes to feel unsatisfactory. If you're concerned about getting a you, I'm concerned about so many things, Mrs. McCain. And you think you can handle the joke your own? You try running the school for one day. You'll have a riot in every room. All I ask, look, some strong things were said, and if he did well, and it was entirely on his own. This time, I'm hoping there'll be a next time. We'll always have more than we can handle. We have to be realistic. You weren't here yesterday. I was at Willowdale Academy being applied for a possible February job. I see. I was being realistic. Yes. Yes, of course. You upset her, McCabe. She is upset, not McCabe and Emery. Sylvia, look, I don't find her inspirational either. But you have to remember, her pupil load is 3,000. It's just such a different world in Willowdale. You mean nobody shops high teach? I mean, I'd only have three classes, three days a week. The other two days are for seminars. I might even get a call from some shops. If that's what you want. I want to practice my profession. I want to be like John Durst, a clerk of Oxford. Gladly would he learn and gladly teach. Why do you think your students picked on the subject? I don't know. Ask McCain. Ask yourself. I have to go. Did anything else happen here while I was gone? Life has happened here. Don't worry, Miss Barrett. We're behind you 85%. <laughs> My mother has been living with me for 15 years now and still insists on cross examining. Please talk to her. I know school is difficult to help with life, but so far, I get it. Plus, they. <laughs> <laughs> this is positively the last time I'm writing to you. You signed the hall. This <laughs> <coughs> way the voice makes the poetry sound the same as the pattern of the pattern, depending on the poem. I checked for Robert Frost in the school library today, but it was closed. Tomorrow. You never call on me, and if you do, very seldom. Jill Norris. I wish to commend you for taking an interest in my and the class as a whole forever. I suggest you continue to be honest. <coughs> Signed, Harry A. Kagan. These cafeteria lunches are lousy. You're right. <laughs> I'm no Miss Bethel. I'm no way nosy. But maybe if I drop out of school and get a job, I'll be somebody with a job. Signed, me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 